Hey guys, welcome back to Tea with the Supreme Spotlight Sunday. I am here with Julie, Ebony, and Savannah. Say hi, ladies. Hey. 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 I'm <laughs> in the spotlight again. What's up, virtual Supremes? Oh, I was waiting for the hey, ladies. Oh, <laughs> I was waiting for the hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Okay, so for our last Spotlight Sunday of season three, Whoa, I wanted to do an article reaction because we all love a good article reaction. And I picked this one because my three fellow Supremes are all mamas to human babies. This sounds only... like it's going to be some crap. Go ahead. I'm listening. No, I, okay. I really think that you will like this one. I think that all three of you are going to like this one, but we'll see. So the title of the article is mom's tough love note to her independent. And I say that in air quotes, son is still getting attention years later. Back in 2015, a single mom named Heidi Johnson knew she had to do something drastic to get her son to obey and respect her. At the time, her son, Aaron was 13 years old and he didn't think he had to respect his mother's rules and he ignored requests to do his chores, his homework before using electronic devices. So Aaron is a YouTuber and he threw the fact that he made money in his mom's face as if the little bit of money he made from his videos meant that he didn't need to respect her as a parent. That's when Heidi had enough and she needed to teach him a tough love lesson about life. While Aaron was at school, Heidi wrote a letter to her son, which I'll read the full letter. She wrote, since you seem to have forgotten that you're only 13 and I am the parent and that you won't be controlled, I guess you need a lesson in independence. She went on to explain that since he is making money, he can pay her back for the things she bought for him. Basic necessities like light bulbs and clothing. She also gave him a list of expenses that he owes her, such as rent and electricity. Heidi went on to give her son several chores he needed to do in order to avoid a maid fee, and she ended the letter with writing, if you decide you would rather be my child again instead of my roommate, we can renegotiate terms. So after writing the note, Heidi took a picture of it, posted it on Facebook, and taped it to her son's bedroom door. And she thought she had set the Facebook post to only make it visible to friends, but she actually accidentally made her post public and she received a lot of backlash. So let me read the letter to you guys. And then I cannot wait for this reaction because I see you guys, I see Ebony boiling. Let's just say that. Okay, so the letter reads, Dear Aaron, since you seem to have forgotten you are 13 and I am the parent that you won't and you won't be controlled, I guess you will need a lesson in independence. Also, if you throw in my face that you are making money now, it will be easier to buy back all the items I bought for you in the past. If you would like your lamp slash light bulb or access to the internet, you will need to pay your share of the cost. So rent was $430 electricity $116, internet $21, and food $150. Also, you will need to empty the trash Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as well as sweep and vacuum those days. You will need to keep your bathroom clean weekly, prepare your own meals, and clean up after yourself. If you fail to do so, I will charge you a $30 made feed, made feed for every day I have to do it. If you decide you would rather be my child again instead of my roommate, we can renegotiate terms. Love, mom. Damn. Mm -hmm. I give her props. Like, as a mom, you say, like, you would do all those things, but to actually, like, enforce that, it's hard. And props to her. Like, that's awesome. Hopefully, she followed through with it. And she did receive a lot of backlash. However, I think that she got her point across to her 13 year old that she she's not messing around anymore I mean how long are you going to take it before you do something that actually inflicts change yeah so I have a weird I'm curious what the backlash was from moms who do everything for their kids <laughs> okay so I actually remember this and there were versions going around for a good minute parents doing it because because I actually did a version of it myself I remember this and I remember reading some of the 
the comments, your parent, you're supposed to take care of your kid. That's what you're, you, 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 you're supposed to do. And you have to find other ways to discipline. And I say this, everybody has mixed opinions about corporal punishment. It's your choice as a parent. I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about regular good old, and we've talked about that on a podcast. Help yourself and go back and listen because we have differing views. I'm going to tell you whatever um, consequences you you put in place in your house that works for your household and your family, do them. Because if you do not, what happens is as a former educator, those over entitled children that you send that do no wrong, they come and wreak havoc in people's classrooms and cause hell to go all over the place. So I'm all for it because children or anyone that's not mature, you only see what's in front of you. You do not understand and you don't have to because you're a kid. You're supposed to be able to get all those things. Hopefully you get what you want, but you get what you need. I'm not required to get you what you want. I get you what you need. And anything above that is additional and is extra. So you not understanding the work that goes into and the things that go into to making sure that you can game and you can be a YouTuber and all those things that you are. Yeah, you get to feeling that grown, then I think I need to, let me give you adult responsibilities. Kudos to her. All right, I thought it was gonna be something crazy. I'm with you, Cass, go ahead, good deal. To answer Jules's question, so not everyone was a fan of Heidi's tough love, but she did, make like an update to her posts and that she said she was never trying to get her son to pay her for anything because she can afford everything but she was trying to enforce certain rules like we were all we're all saying you know so the lesson outweighed the backlash I don't know I, I'm conflicted because one I definitely think that you need to discipline your children especially if they're disrespectful and ungrateful for what you provide to them because I'm very big on life is hard granted yes kid there are kids and we make the decision to have kids so it's our responsibility to take care of them make sure that they're loved and whatever taken care of however like I feel like I want I have so many questions He's a YouTuber, right? Making money, supposedly. What's that money going to? Like, does he automatically get to use that money? Does she use that money? Like, where is that? Because in my brain, I'm like, okay, if he's getting the money right away, then that I feel like is bad parenting. Even if he's working for it, he shouldn't have access to that money because he's a child. He doesn't know how to spend it. And like, you got to learn how to be financially responsible. But if she's getting that money, then does it just turn around and go towards his stuff to make his channel? Like, I, what's the what's the end game? Like, from the business aspect, I'm like, what what's going on here? From the parenting aspect, though, and I will say I'm guilty of it, too. When you provide your children with very comfortable lives, if they are ungrateful and disrespectful, it's difficult to, like make a hard stop and just be like I'm taking everything away you got to pay for light bulbs because that I mean you created that environment so it's not a hundred percent fair I feel like you got to have a relationship reboot because you fostered that kind of dynamic where your child straight up disrespected you I will say though like I had an experience with my oldest this was I don't know maybe four or five years ago I've been working from home for the past six years. So he came home one day and he was like, I just want to be like you. I wish I could stay home and do nothing all day. And I was like, say, what did it come? What? (laughs) So then for like the next two days, I made him follow me around after school and do everything that I did. And then he was like, I don't want to do this anymore. (laughs) And I was like, So it wasn't, I didn't have to take anything away, but I was like, you want to do what I do? Let's do what I do. So that he had a better understanding. But yeah, I mean, you got to do whatever works. At the end of the day, if it worked for her and it worked for him to like get a reality check, I mean, good for them. I mean, there's not so much background provided on the situation, but I feel like the situation that this mom and son had is like, you know, she tried to be the nice mom or whatever and tried to let him have the freedoms that he was used to. 
but it came to a point where he was just like taking advantage and coming to the realization like I don't need to listen to you and she was going with her usual methods of punishment where she had to do something drastic for it to change so uh, I do feel like a reboot is necessary, but I also feel like she was probably like, I am so tired of this. We need to do something drastic or nothing's going to change. It's definitely a slippery slope being the nice parent all the time. I'll agree 100% with that because kids, I mean, kids by nature and not because they're bad, but by nature, they take advantage when they can. That's just the nature of a child. They're like, I can get stuff out of this. This is how they work. So when you want to be like their friend, there's a lot of potential downside to that. Can I just say, if I ever told my mom, no, I was, I was spoiled. I am still spoiled. I'm 28 years old and I still get Valentine's from my mom. Like (laughs) that's just how she is. However, if I ever told my mom or dad, no, I'm not doing something, my ass would have been smacked from here to kingdom come. I would have been, because I learned that when my parents or my grandparents or an elder asks me to do something in a respectful manner, not barking something at me, I listen to that. I take my time out of my day and I listen to them and I do what they ask. Oh, oh, I would have gotten smacked so hard. I just that's the difference though, right? Because I was a spoiled brat. I'm not going to lie. All of my siblings, we were all spoiled. I didn't, not that I really want to share my personal life. I didn't grow up in the struggle. I didn't grow up broke. Both my parents were college educated. Like I didn't have those issues and I spent their money very well. Please understand. I was a professional at it. Well into my adult life, I was. And see, Jules said, you know, like, what happens with the money and see that, 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 that like, oh, that just did something to me because I could hear that mom say, like, I could hear that kid throwing that in that mom's face. Well, I make this on the YouTube. Like, I can't say that's what happened. I'm just using my imagination to say that's what happened based on the, the consequences that she put in place. And see, for me, it doesn't matter because you can be spoiled and you can be nice but there must be balance like anything else in life, you know, to cast this point, my parents would have knocked me out. Like you couldn't be disrespectful. Like they would have, let's just be honest. You really couldn't, you couldn't be ungrateful. That's something that I've always instilled in my son. You have to still have a work ethic. Um, Even with what you did, Jules, you know, with your son following you around. I don't see that as, I mean, it is disrespect for me. It's disrespectful, but it's unlearned. So I take the time to educate you so you understand I don't have to in turn go this route because that's not what it is. For me, this read, this child wanted to be an adult and didn't understand financial responsibility because you pulling in 100, 200 or $500. I don't care what you pull it in. Listen, 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 listen. That's not paying for this house. Now, your YouTube salary was paying for everything in the house and you were taking care of me, that's different. But if I still know how much the lights cost, the gas costs, and what a light bill has to, you know, what a light bulb costs because I have to go buy it, then you're not doing that. And boom, bam, boom, you need a, you need a reality check. And I think that's what she gave him, a reality check. Yeah, I mean, that's an important distinction, I feel like, though. Like, if as a child... I feel the same way for for any child that is working to help support their family. It depends on like the circumstance. Like if the child is legitimately earning money that the mother is paying bills with, that's a different context because at that point you are forcing the child to be an adult. So that's a different dynamic, which is not specified although she said she has makes enough money to pay the bills, so that isn't the reality. My childhood was very different. I, we didn't have, we weren't spoiled for one, for sure. There wasn't an intense amount of respect either. And again, that's a slippery slope because as a parent, I don't want to say, especially with boys, but when kids get to be adolescents, right? If they are brought up in an environment where they are provided leniency with authority and they are 
allowed to act in a certain way and behave, respond in a certain way to their parents, and then they hit adolescence, they're going to continue the behavior that they have learned that has been acceptable. So if as a parent, you have allowed that to happen for years, you have to take a level of responsibility and ownership and realize that even if you do, like, even if she did this letter and she cried, I'm not saying this is her case, but even if you take like a drastic measure to give the kid a reality check, you also have to give yourself a reality check and own your responsibility in the relationship which I don't think is always done. And I think, I I agree with that. And I think this letter, if that was the case, because this can be read a lot of ways. Savannah started this and said, you know, if she followed through, because that would be the reality check. Because I used to tell people all the time, when you punish your kids, it's more work for the parents than it is for the child. You know, you have to stay on that schedule. I said no TV or whatever it is you said, no game. And then you have to remember three days later, you said, no game when they got on your nerves and just go play the game and leave me alone. Like we do that. So that consistency is much harder for us than it is for the kids. So if that was the case, because you're correct, if you in turn did not discipline your children and did not set boundaries, and we all know the types of parents, those, the helicopter, whatever the case may be, and you just let them go, then you deal with the consequences of it. But you recognizing it and saying, hey, listen, that's enough. And they didn't get that enough. And then this is the lesson that you come up with. Cool. I dig the lesson because I think, I mean, every kid is different. But at some point, I think all kids go through this phase when they figured out they know the world and they're grown and you can't tell me. And what do you do all day? I mean, I remember sitting in as an undergrad because I had my son at 22 and people saying, you know, those little, <laughs> whatever, you know, 18, 19 year olds. Um, well, if you get child support, the net goes to your child. Uh-huh. Listen, and we used to have those debates. Like, you know, what do you do with that? And it, for me, it's the same thing. Because when you get to the point where you're that grown and you need to, you know, and this is not for the parent that doesn't take care of their child, but whatever I see fit to do with that, that I received, you know, because if I took everything I had and paid, because there were some days that it was a struggle. So I took everything I had to pay everything that was needed. Then whatever I did with that money, you have what you have. So I think it's the same. For me, it's the same concept. You know, circumstances may be different, but you you have the right to dictate what happens. And you know your kid best. If you're an honest parent, you know your kid best. You know your kid is entitled you know, your kid has no respect. You know, your kid has no respect for a dollar. Like they don't understand the difference of my son was real good at, well, just, I don't have any money for that. Well, just pull out the credit card. (laughs) What? You know, granny has the credit cards. Well, just call granny and get one of her credit cards. She swipe it all the time. Uh -uh -uh -uh. So I had to then go out of my way to give my son financial lessons to understand that just because you swipe this card does not mean it's just an unlimited amount of resources. So if that's what you have to do to give your kid a reality check, do you. I keep telling people all the time, you don't, if you want a different choice than spanking, then come up with something creative. You know, whatever you need that works in your house that's creative. I think it was really awesome that you had your son follow you around. Listen, okay, I don't do anything. Well, let's see what the I don't do that you do that I don't do. And it's okay, you know what? I'm done, mom. That's that's all I need. See? So it didn't take taking anything from him, but he needed a reality check just like this kid then needed a reality check. Yeah, so, I just feel like I'm like, I don't know. I'm indecisive. I do think that kids need reality checks. And I do think that kids shouldn't be disrespectful of their parents and a lot of things. But even just the fact that it was a letter which she wrote and then taped to his door speaks to possibly a relationship issue because you would think as a parent that that, that's a conversation you should be able to have with your child and be like, look, we're cracking down. I feel like it's so so aggressive. See, I don't, I guess, and that just speaks to everybody's different parenting styles because there's, there were times in my relationship with my son that 
he, we could not speak, you know, the conversation through emotions would get in, you know, it would get, it would go left and it would digress. And it, it, it just, he didn't feel the need to express that way. So he would write me a letter and I would have to sit and it made me sit and look and not have to respond or him respond or feel that I was saying something that was uh, an attack toward him and it gave him time and I would respond to him back. We had a journal. Like, did you write him yeah. this with unprompted, yeah. not because he not because you needed to respond, but like you had times that you couldn't verbalize with him. Yeah, I've had times like that. And he's not, and that's not the only relationship dynamic where I've done that. Even with us and the Supremes, there were times that we had to write each other and say, okay, look, take out everything else. And it gave each person the opportunity to express their thoughts and then you read their thoughts and whatever way you, I mean, I think communication is such a vast something that if that's the way you communicate it, and especially if that parent was angry, because people assume that parents don't get angry and your feelings don't get hurt and you don't get offended. And sometimes you do things and get out of yourself and get out of your feelings. So if that's the way it was communicated here, bro, listen, that's it. This is the law. And that may have saved the kid, you know, because my temper could have said something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's your kid and you go back and apologize. But once the words are said, the damage is done. So, and I've had to go back and apologize as a parent a lot of times. So sometimes, okay, hmm, take this. Let me, let me read and see what he's saying. And then, whew, okay, come back to it. Or he had other people that he could go, at least in my situation, he could go talk to. But I mean, it makes, I don't, I don't see that as, I don't see that as odd, especially if this kid was manipulative or entitled, which kind of seems like that could have been the case. And you kind of flip words around and you, you know, I was charismatic and unfortunately my kid got that same trait. So he was really good about flipping the scenario and the situations. Yeah, this is it. And this gives you a straight line that you don't have anything else to, we don't have anything else to talk about. So initially, and this is from the article, Aaron was upset with, by the note, which is completely understandable. He crumpled the letter, threw it on the floor and stormed out of the apartment. And when he returned, he sat in his mom's room and told her that she couldn't enforce anything she had written in the letter. However. An hour after he had returned to his room, he seemed to have a change of heart. He removed his TV and a few other things he thought he should have earned back. And he said he was sorry and asked his mom what he could do to help. So I think he just needed like a minute to process, you know, because when somebody writes you a letter, you know, Ebony was just speaking to that writing and texting, even texting now, you know, sometimes it comes off the wrong way but you just need a minute to like process, you know, and we all know how each other talks. So when we text, like we, it's like, we're having a conversation like we're having right now, but in a, in a parental child relationship, I think it's a little bit different because I don't think he had ever seen this form of communication from her before. Um, so it's been about six years since Heidi wrote the letter to her son, but the message is still resonating with her and him. And yeah, I thought that was interesting. I don't know. It's hard because I have a 13 year old son and he, we have our moments as well, but I'm very fortunate. I like, it's important to me to have really clear communication. So like we have, and that's, I guess, perspective only because that's the dynamic of our relationship. Like we just sit down and hash it out and it is what it is, but I'm equally strict. I mean, I've told the Supremes this, my son my son my oldest babysits for us which is a is a um area of contention for many parents anyways should your parent should your children be responsible to watch other children that's a whole issue in itself I feel no unless they're compensated however 
my son gets full on invoices for his time as a babysitter and he gets deductions for miscellaneous disrespect among other things but like the, the communication is clear and he knows and he's had two weeks recently where he did babysit and he did not get a paycheck and because the deductions were too high so, but that's, and he's fine because he understands that's like, that's the expectation to, to get compensated. That's just the reality of whatever. Can you send us the invoice? I don't want to interrupt. Can you just send us the invoice though? Can we, can we see one of the invoice? I'm just saying. I, I just, sent I an invoice it. before. He's, oh, she sent it. It's hilarious. Yeah, I didn't see, I didn't see <laughs> yeah, an invoice. An invoice. One, one, one week he got an invoice for $3 and 86 cents. And then the next week he did not have any deductions at all. <laughs> so it, I mean, it doesn't work all the time, but like he understands, but we do have, he gets a dollar de- dollar deduction for every, there's a, different things like doing his homework, whether or not he makes the bus, but one of the fields is miscellaneous disrespect and he gets a dollar off for every incident. And like we have carte blanche with whatever we deem as miscellaneous disrespect. So that's That's just part of our agreement and I put it in the notes so if there's no contention like this is our agreement I am your employer when you're babysitting for me and this is it and it works for us did he sign a contract too he didn't this is like (laughs) what Ebony said it's more work for the parent it's It's true it is work to discipline your kids and like I don't like it if I had I don't like it. I would, I was about to say if I had infinite money, but I don't want him to be a jerk of a human being either. But I do want my kids to be happy and I spoil, I do want to spoil my kids. If I have the means to do so, I do want them to have everything their little hearts desire because life is not that long. Um, and I want them to enjoy it to the their fullest. However, I also want to enjoy our family dynamic. And if that gets in the way, then that's when I have a problem. So last summer I had to teach my son a lesson (laughs) because like I was super busy and I didn't have time Mm -hmm. to clean my car and I was like please go clean my car and I'll give you twenty dollars he's like no thanks I'm like okay now you're gonna do it for free (laughs) and he was pissed but I absolutely I've had times like that too where I've told my son like you can make x to do this and he's like no it's all right I don't need the money I'm like all right well (laughs) since you don't need the money you can do it as a favor (laughs) see and that's it all as we are sharing you know the different stories and I know Cass 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 picks great articles I will give her that um although our perspectives were different when we started this process even in the examples that we in these lived experiences that we're sharing there is still the same sentiment teach your kid boundaries right teach your kid responsibility and whether we agree with the way this parent did it she did it the problem becomes when you don't teach your kid these things so maybe I don't agree with the methods that you use the fact that you're doing it and you're using something to teach them like because I think that's like real deal super cool to say hey um here's what you're going to get paid and here are the deductions. Now, what wouldn't be fair for me is that if you just have car blanche on deductions and you don't tell me what and you set me up for failure. But the fact that you say here and I, because we know Jules, she went through every possible and impossible, and that's not the way you say that, but impossible scenario that could happen, um, you know, that, that possibly could wind up in a deduction, right? That's what you do as a parent. So she said, she being whoever this parent was, she said, look, here's the real deal. Here's the things. Cause you know, you're a YouTuber. So the internet is important to you. The TV is important to you. The computer is important to you. All those things are important. Here's what those things cost. And if you don't abide by these rules and you're not respectful, then here's the cost of these things that you now need to incur because you want to be an adult. I I'm telling you, as I hear that scenario, there's no different than what Jules did in her example to say, Hey, here's the reality. This is, this is part of the family and whatever reason she did it for, you get to hang out with your other siblings and you get to be responsible. And as parents, we pick things that affect our children and we see their lack. So Savannah said, Hey, listen, 
go do this. I'm thinking I'm going to do, you know, this and, and even give my kids some money. Oh, so you're not going to do it. Okay, now go do it for free. See, I think different scenarios, same boundaries, same lessons about respect and about responsibility, like same lessons across the board, even if we each taught them differently. So I think once you, there's no handbook for parenting, like it's I not a cake say, walk. As you say that too, I do recognize like the things that I use for my oldest, as much as I want to say they will transition effectively to my middle child, they will not. I have totally different, which in itself causes conflict because my oldest is like, why are your expectations different? But like, it's a different child. It's a different dynamic. There's different, I have to navigate that relationship differently because he understands things in a different way and things, you know, some discipline doesn't work in the same way that it works with my oldest. So every relationship is different for sure, even within your own family. And with that, we are wrapping up our last Spotlight Sunday of season, wait, is it season three? Season three. Season the choice. Three. The choice. Yes. So I hope you all enjoyed it and we will see you all tomorrow. Bye guys. For our season Bye. finale. Bye. The Bye, finale. Everybody.